Welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the Know with Juanita. We're glad to have you watching our show again this week. We're always happy for viewers like you that are interested in what's happening in our cities. Because it is important for good government that there be a flow of information back and forth between the city council and the mayor, the city staff, and the residents. So we're glad that you're with us again tonight. If you haven't watched our show before, each week we'll have somebody on from one of the nine cities in CCX's viewing area to tell us about what are the current and some of the future issues that are happening in the city. Then, if it's an issue that resonates with you and it's one that concerns you and you live in that city, be sure to take down their name and email and phone number so that you can get in contact and let them know what you're thinking. Or do the same with your mayor and city council. Now we're very happy tonight to have two people with us from Crystal. We've got Julie Deschler, who's on, now which ward are you in? I represent Ward 4, which is the northern portion of Crystal, close to the Crystal Airport. Okay. And Nancy LaRoche. Hi. One of the newer council members. Brand right? new this yeah. year. Started in January in, in Section 1, the southern half of Crystal. So we're glad that you're both with us and fill us in on what's happening in Crystal. And Julie's been here before, so she knows that I'm going to ask her to introduce herself out to our wider audience. People in your area of Crystal would know you, but some of the people might not. So a little bit about your time in this area. Well, my, God, my name is Julie Deschler. Uh, I represent the area on uh, north part of Crystal. I've been on the City Council since 2010. I first ran uh, late 2009 to fill a seat that was vacated by mm -hmm. Gary Grimes, who had held the seat for many, many years. Oh, right. And uh, he retired because of illness. And um, so I finished his two-year term. Mm -hmm. I won that seat. And then the following uh, 2012, uh, I I ran again, but nobody ran against me. So uh -huh. like I said, it's kind of easy to win when nobody runs against <laughs> right, you. Right. And then this year in 2016, um, I had an opponent, but was uh, blessed enough to, to win again. Right, so I'm, right. I'll be representing the residents until 2020. Uh -huh. Okay, and Nancy LaRoche. My turn. Hi. Right. Uh, my name is Nancy LaRoche. I'm a 20-year resident of Crystal uh, with my husband, Walt. We currently live with a rescued dog, Spencer, ah. who's the talk of the town and <laughs> quite the character. <laughs> uh, but we love Crystal. The minute we moved in, we went to the city to get information on our house. Uh -huh. uh, the staff was so helpful, gave us, pulled out the file on the house. We got to see what ah. was done, uh, talked to the police uh, department asked ah. them about the neighborhood. They said, it's great. We never get calls. We rarely, rarely uh -huh. get calls. So uh, we have just absolutely loved it here. And from right off the bat, had a wonderful experience with city staff. Uh -huh. And so my heart's always been here. Been involved with Crystal, oh gosh, since night, I'm sorry, 2006, I was uh -huh. an election judge. Uh -huh. Been doing that for 10 years up until last year when I ran. Uh, been on the Park and Rec Commission for five years. Uh, that ended at the end of last uh -huh. year. I was also appointed to the Charter Commission. Uh -huh. And I'm a, 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 a volunteer for the Crystal Frolics Committee. I've so, been doing yeah. that for the last four or five years. Yeah, you've been involved for quite a bit. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Love it. We just And then met Julie through Frolics and Park and Rec. Right, and, right. Yeah, she's been great. She's been a wonderful mentor uh -huh. for me. Well, thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then I ask you to think about or to share with our audience, what are the, some of the things that your citizens will come up and ask you about or be concerned about? Okay. You they know, come to you. Um, right now, okay. our neighborhood part is uh, in the throes of a big major street reconstruction. Ah. So a lot of questions right now are uh, sewer questions. You know, can I have my sewer done at the same time? Right. Um, can I have my driveway widened? Uh -huh. um, why is the assessment so high? Oh, <laughs> right, right. Uh, how long are we going to? Yeah, how long is the, the project going to last? How long are we going to be living? You know, have dust in uh -huh. our homes? So actually, right now, those are my paramount questions oh, right, that I get right. get the most. Because yeah. each city has a little different long term plan mm -hmm. for their roads. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about what Crystal's is. Well. About 20 years ago, Crystal started a program where they were going to go through the entire city and redo okay. the streets from curb to curb, uh -huh. put new curb and gutter in, um, and they call them kind of like the 40 to 50 year streets. They right. do major renovation on them. 
and, and you have to do it at some point. You can't oh. let your city decay. Right. Mm -hmm. So they like they've been doing them uh, neighborhood by neighborhood, uh -huh. and so they had a to they separated out the city in sixteen different project uh -huh. areas, and the city um, I think picked up the cost of forty percent of it, uh -huh. and the residents essentially are paying sixty percent okay. of the project costs. And at the same time that they're redoing the streets, the residents are offered an opportunity to uh, have their main drain redone. Oh, sure. So the city kind of sends a camera down, uh -huh. and it looks kind of up the, it, it doesn't look real far up, right. but it, it, it can kind of tell, look, this is kind of going to be a problem um, right. sewer. And it notifies those residents. At the time, if they see a problem, they'll notify the residents uh -huh. and say, this is an opportunity. The streets are already going to be oh, dug up. Right, right. You can have your sewer done. If you can't afford the cost, you can assess it on your taxes ah. over 15 years. Mm -hmm. Same right. as the street reconstruction right. project. And then they implemented another program where residents could redo their driveway too. Ah. Because the cost is about half. Right. As long as the roads are already dug right. up, the equipment is there, they'll come in and you can either have a choice of an asphalt driveway or a uh, concrete. Uh -huh. So a lot, quite a few residents take, take advantage mm -hmm. of that. And then the other, um, other item that they offer is an opportunity to have a rain garden. Oh, yeah. Depending on if your lawn is, you know, suited for a rain right. garden. And if it would be a, a benefit, I guess, uh -huh. to have one. So well, some people take advantage of it, some don't. Some right. maybe want it that, that can't get it because yeah. of the way their lawn is laid out. But it is kind of a nice way to capture some of the stormwater right, you know, rain right. runoff. So, do you remember the number, Julie? It was well over a dozen, I believe, that requested one ah. in so that that's in that section of yeah. Bay 16. So that was exciting too. Oh, that right. area is pretty flat, so uh -huh. there's not a lot of places for the water to go. So the city's real excited to oh, put in those. As, yeah. as many as people want. Yeah. Right, because it does collect a lot oh, of right. storm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is the last major project for any extended period of time because in theory the roads are supposed to be you know 50 year streets mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean that there isn't going to be times where you right. need mill and overlay but you aren't going to need to completely redo them like like the city has done so at the end of the summer essentially every single street in crystal ah. will be redone and oh, you know they look nice cool. yeah they really do look nice and so while it's painful to pay for the assessment i've when I was out campaigning this year, the residents that had it done last year, um, when it was all done, oh, they just, they seem like uh, they get kind of a, a new smile right. on, on their face and a little spring in their, they've got pride in their neighborhood. Uh -huh. It's a facelift for it's sure. It's a facelift. It? Oh, yeah. It's absolutely mm -hmm. a facelift. Well, and it affects whether people want to buy homes if you've got exactly. a broken up pothole street. Mm -hmm. Right, right. When you have homes that are 40, 50 years old, right. to have that new curb and new high yeah. asphalt really does add a lot to the right. character. Right, right. Along with the big, you know, mature trees. It right. just, the curb appeal is wonderful. Oh, it is. Literally. It is. So yeah. which streets will be done? Be in the summer's construction uh, area? Yeah, so it's, um, you know, a highway or uh, 81 okay. or Botany Boulevard. So all the homes north of Bass Lake Road. Okay. Going north to the airport from 81 all the way over to like Perry ah. or Orchard. Right. So it's quite a, quite a lot of homes. Mm -hmm. I, I, <laughs> and then the, the area up behind uh, Rastamos. Uh-huh. In that area. That's just kind of a little four or five blocks back in there. So. And so then from this point forward, it'll be Maintenance looking as at, needed. Looking at streets that need just the top layer taken right, off. Right, right. And we're, you know, the, like I said, 20 years ago this started and everybody was assessed. And of course mm -hmm. every year the project costs go up and right. so the assessments are quite a bit more. Oh, right. But we're, as a council, we're committed to looking at ways now to start saving for these larger projects ah. so that 5, 10, 15, 20 years from right. now when they start, these major projects again there's funding there to sustain ah. it so we don't have to assess you know I'm not promising right. anything but, but that's it, our goal. Whatever you have it will help with the yes. whole process. Yeah mm -hmm. and we are committed to trying to um, suspend any assessments for the mill mm -hmm. and overlay too but you know we'll see how it goes. Right. That's kind of our plan mm -hmm. as, as far as I know. 
Yeah, and by having that, um, say there's already a tax amount in there right. for those streets that you're paying all along, I think it's a little more equitable too. Mm -hmm. When I moved in 20 years ago, the assessment was about $3,000. Uh -huh. Now it's up around, what, eight or nine? Depending on oh yeah, well, I can tell you it's eight thousand four hundred and sixty nine dollars for an average. Right. <laughs> but who's counting? Right. <laughs> yeah. So it's you know when you think about that with inflation and time, you know back then twenty years ago three thousand right. was a lot. You right. know and looking today when you see eight thousand four hundred, right. that's a lot too. Yeah, yeah. It, right. it is. It's oh. it's quite shocking and it, and we heard from a lot of residents at the council meetings, the public forums. Um, how difficult it was. Oh, now the right. good news is there is some financing available uh -huh. that you can put on your property tax right. or uh, veterans and seniors also have some finance options as well. Seniors and veterans that are serving out of the country mm -hmm. uh, and then a low, low income, they can uh, postpone the payments or delay oh, them. Yes. But somebody's going to have to pay someday. Right, right. right. Yeah. So I mean there's no free ride but and it um, is a low interest loan too. It is, a, it's, uh -huh. and it's a four percent simple interest. Mm -hmm. And ways to help people in Correct. managing yeah. it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, never easy though. But hopefully, going forward now, uh, if we can finance it a more equitable right. way, that's right. I'm all for that too. Yeah. Oh, well, let's switch over to the Crystal Airport, and the airport is proposing a runway extension. Well, or, it's, yeah. or it's in the middle of something. <laughs> so maybe you can t tell us a little bit about you know, the I'm details. Not, I'm not really, really well okay. versed on it. I've been to a couple meetings. Uh -huh. um, but essentially what they're trying to do is it, there's the runways that are going north right. and south, and then they've got some traffic coming in east and west. Mm -hmm. And so they're trying to, they want to keep everything kind of north and south ah. so that it's safer. Oh, right. And... Uh, but they also want to increase the, the runway length just a, uh -huh. a little bit mm -hmm. um, so that it offers more more room for landing, mm -hmm. which is another safety issue. And it might attract a little bigger plane. I mean, when okay. I say larger, I don't want to scare anybody. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe like a six-seat King Air or something people. instead of a <laughs> two-seater. Two right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think particularly with the light rail coming in, oh, right. my suspicion is, and I, you know, I can't say this with right. certainty, but I suspect that part of the reason is A, for safety, but B, might be able to attract a little more business oh, traveler right. that could right. come in, right. park, have dinner or something, and, you know, jump on the light rail, uh -huh. go downtown to a meeting. and So I think it's a long term, but they are going to start construction fairly quickly. Okay, and yeah. now the airport is run by the Metropolitan Airports, Airports Commission. Commission. How yeah. does Crystal interact with that group? Or well, you know, they they run the airport. They uh -huh. have say on what right. goes on at the airport. I think we have some land usage, uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. some say in what they do with the land. But technically, it's it's their they own it. Right. But they've been coming to our meetings with reports showing. Yes, they're they a really good partner. Good at communicating. Yeah. And the public open houses as well, right. so oh, citizens right, could right, weigh in and right. see what. Yeah, so there are opportunities for people to. Mm -hmm. There was no pushback from any residents at all. Um, I, there was just recently an, air, an open house about this run, ah. the, this uh, project uh -huh. a few weeks ago in Brooklyn Center that I attended, and it was right. really well attended, but nobody really. I think there was one person that was concerned about something, ah. but. You know, for instance, there's been times when uh, some trees have to be trimmed oh, or removed right. because when the pilots are coming in, mm -hmm. they, they're blocking because they get so high. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've noticed that they're really good partners in the community in that they reach out to the residents, ah. they, they give them a monetary, um, uh -huh. um, they get some if they have to remove the right. tree, they will replace it. Oh, okay. So they're fair, you know, they're okay. fair. And so. You know, I'm a big proponent of the airport because mm -hmm. it makes gives Crystal something unique. It does. You know, mm -hmm. we were. I was joking with someone. They said we well, don't have a water tower. And I said yes, but we do have an airport tower. <laughs> <laughs> right. We have a tower. Right, right. <laughs> something that identifies the yeah. city. Right. Correct. A traffic yeah. control tower. Right. Right. <laughs> now. Um, now, all of our cities are involved in a process dealing with comprehensive plans for their city. 
and a lot of people out there might not have any idea what they're about and it's a, a somewhat intricate process mm -hmm. but all the cities do it every 10 years and right. it's under the Metropolitan Council so I thought mm -hmm. we could talk a little bit about this whole process because now when is when does crystal have to have their plan in to mm -hmm. the met council next year ah, 2018 right. will be submitted mid middle of the year we understand is it due the in 18 or is well, it due 2020 or i don't know well i think the whole process has to be completed it, by 2020 because yeah. right once but they get it they have to analyze it and yeah. then they have to talk to other cities and yeah in my notes it said you know your question right. was when does the next update need to be submitted and approved and Ann Norris our city manager she helped us a little with right. our notes oh yeah uh, <laughs> thank you Ann yeah. <laughs> um, in mid 2018 she right. said so things are probably then going through the system to be ready by 2020 right, right. yeah so that implement. everything is up to that, that point must be time. Where it's done. Now, a lot of different areas are involved in that comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can mention some of the areas where Crystal gets involved. Now, I've got a listing of them, because how your land yeah. is used, how your housing, how, how mm -hmm. dense it's going to be or not, transportation, parks, trails, your recreation, water, sewer, sanitation, so all, lots the of areas are involved. System, the so whole it, system. it does. Uh, make sure that cities are looking to the future. Right. But which areas do you think are most important for Crystal? I think the park and recreation. Um, the park we, master plan. The park master ah. plan is huge this year. We have 27 parks, and I know we're right. going to get into that right. later. Yeah, we'll talk about but that all by itself. Right. The parks have been, um, you know, sadly because of budget constraints oh, during right. the economy right. when things took a downturn. It was all we could do to maintain what we had. Well, now things have been looking better, and right. these parks are now, some are at the stage where uh -huh. we need things done now. So uh, we had John Elmholm, who was hired and started last year. Gene right. Hackett had retired. Uh -huh. uh, John Elmholm is our new recreation mm -hmm. director. Ah. He brought, I served on the Park and Rec Commission, oh, right, so right. We, I was involved with all of that as well. John said, brought it up with a group, do you want, we should do a, a master plan, and mm -hmm. we were all thrilled about that. So that, so that they hired dovetails a, right into this whole process. Exactly. Right. So that's going to dovetail right into right. the comprehensive plan. So you're going to see some real exciting modernizing mm -hmm. facilities now, um, programs for things that are more popular, such as soccer and lacrosse oh, right. and, right. and uh, you know, playground upgrades, um, things like that. So maybe potentially some water. What is that? Is there any senior playground equipment? You're That's doing? I'm uh -huh. I'm really I really hope so because Cavanaugh uh -huh. Park is nearby. Right. Um, Bassett Creek, we have a lot of senior apartments right nearby, right. Um, and so yeah, they are looking at that uh -huh. <laughs> because at any age can play right. on those. Yeah, cover right. the whole area, can, right? And we have some of the more modern pieces already coming out. For instance, those those swings. Um, they're where the mother or parent is with the little one, and they're facing each other. Uh -huh. It's interactive oh, and cool. it's. We've, we have one or two uh -huh. going up. One's at Bassett Creek right now. Okay. So that's that's dovetailing into it. Uh, we're also working on the water supply with the Joint Water Commission. Uh -huh. That's a huge thing because oh, right. we all know the horrible things that happened when that water main broke in oh, Robbinsdale. Um, and other systems are starting to fail as well. Mm -hmm. So that's more of a, a of a planning, not a planning, but a public works thing. Right. But the, with the joint, uh, the joint water, water commission course, cities, yeah. we need to work on the water supply. Oh, right. That's huge. Right. And, and that's sure part that of the long-term planning. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, where is Crystal in the process? Because every city is at a different place, and where they're at in going through this process. We haven't started yet. Correct for okay. comprehensive plan. Right. That's going to start this fall. And thank you again, Anne, for your notes because uh -huh. because we're fully developed, our process won't start until later this year. Oh, right. Uh, and then, ten years ago, um, and this was before long before, before Julie was on sure. as well. So this whole council is brand new to this oh, right. plan. Right. Yeah. But they, I read online on our website. They. The current plan is up there for everyone to read, which is great. But they they explained a bit of the process. And there were about 27 Residents. citizens involved. Yeah. Right, right. So we take input from everyone. I was thrilled to see that, and I imagine that will happen again. Yeah, next year. it sounds like that. There's going to be some um, 
announcements coming out. Yeah, and, and asking if people, people are for concerned input. about what's happening with the city, they can go to your website and go through a fairly oh, extensive many page everything. plan right. covering right. all those areas that we talked about. Exactly. And the plan, like I said, the current one is up there. You can download it right. as a PDF and read through it. So, yeah, that's what I know about that one. Me too. <laughs> and, then, and, then, well, and then part of it, too, is once you get your plan together, then the cities that border you, you have to look at it. So Yes, we all there, You know, it's a very comprehensive process. So the word fits the process mm -hmm. that where everybody kind of looks at things, makes projections, maybe changes things. Then the other part of the comprehensive plan is when you're going to do some development in your city, then you have to fit that plan or tell why you need to make a change. Mm -hmm. Correct. And also, I, the one last note here, uh, Ann note wrote that uh, law requires our contiguous neighbors to receive our comp plan for review and comment. Right. So it's in the, by law. So we not only work cooperatively right. with them, but by law we need oh, to. Oh, right, right. And see then. See each other's doing. Uh, who in your city will be this will this be under do you know yet I believe it would be our community development director okay mm -hmm. and their name is John Sutter okay so if any mm -hmm. ask questions about what this comprehensive plan is John Sutter at the City Hall would be yes. the best person mm -hmm. to right. contact yes mm -hmm. right now another area that's gets in the news a lot is the blue line light rail transit it was bought no and now it's blue line light rail and it comes through crystal so i thought maybe you could give us a little of what's the current status on the blue line extension of light rail transit in crystal well there's a long long planning and engineering okay you know process that goes along oh, with yes. building something like this and so um, it's my understanding that they're about 60 percent through the engineering okay. design phase of the of the of the light rail, mm -hmm. and um, you know that there is still staff at the um, at the project office, uh -huh. and they're working diligently. They're continuing to work. You know, one day I'm real. Um, it, you know, I feel good about the fact that it's going through, and then I listen to the news, and then I. I think, well, I wonder if the funding is in yeah, trouble. Yeah, what's going to happen? So it, right? it's like a roller coaster every oh, day. Yeah. But they keep they keep planning, and we keep attending meetings. We get a weekly update uh -huh. with the progress. Mm -hmm. um, we're kind of talking right now, at least for Crystal, the uh, Botano or the Bass Lake Road Station, Crystal Station on, right. on Bass Lake in '81, and just. Um, you know, trying to make some improvements in terms of streetscape along the oh, sure. Bass Lake Road corridor, just to kind of give a little lift and mm -hmm. and a facelift to right. that area, because that's kind of a major thoroughfare. Oh, definitely. And so when we've got people on the train, we want you know to look welcoming. Yeah, we'll, right, yeah look right. welcoming. Right. You might want to come back. Right. 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 And then uh, we've got some residents along that back up. They live kind of on Elmhurst, but uh -huh. they back up along um, their house back right. up to 81. We're talking, working on some visual screening okay. looks and hopefully kind of a little, it's not really a sound barrier, but it'll help as uh -huh. muffle the sounds a little bit. So there, the project office is working really closely with those neighbors uh -huh. along mm -hmm. that corridor. And this, all of this is under the agencies of the Metropolitan Council, This right? is all Met Council, right. correct. Mm -hmm. correct. You have a lot of input into the process. We do. Or, I mean, or they there's have a, a lot community of input meetings. Yeah, they do. They have, we have a couple of representatives from, in terms of residents uh -huh. that mm -hmm. attend the uh, community working group meetings that meet monthly with the project right. office and the design team. And then there's also a couple members from the business community. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. that also attend to weigh in with what the business's concerns are or, right. or suggestions. So there's a lot of resident and citizen input that they take into account mm -hmm. during this process. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if things still keep moving away as planned, you know, it should be constructed in 2020, but once the train is completely constructed, you know, they have to test it for oh, one right. year right. before they can take paying pa passengers. Mm -hmm. So it really, it would be 2021 before anybody could yeah. hop on the train and go see a Twins game from our area. 
So hopefully it all moves forward, right? Well, yeah. yeah. In I the mean, current political climate, there's little worries <laughs> about well, yeah. the process. It's the funding. But it is yeah. moving forward. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and the other thing to consider, too, it's not only getting the money to build it, but the money to maintain it, ah, the operational right, costs. Right. What is the subsidy amount? Uh -huh. Is it sustainable financially? You know, once that train is running, that's going to be another issue mm -hmm. we have to think forward on. Right. But now, one of the things about that I remember reading about Crystal is there was concern about an overpass over 81. Mm. Where, what's the nature of that, or what are people mm -hmm. thinking? Or Well, that the uh, pedestrian bridge was taken out of this okay. project scope because of cost. Ah. And so Hennepin County is going to make some improvements, some at-grade okay. crossing improvements at Highway 81 in Bass Lake. Right, because that's a significant <laughs> interchange. Well, yes, essentially people have to go through six, seven, eight, eight, they have to cross eight lanes yeah, of traffic. Yeah, which no, usually, ten, and really. usually you're lucky if you can get across it in half. Life. Yeah, you're yeah. usually able to get about halfway. Yeah. And it, consider a senior or a... Oh, right, right. A, someone who might be, you know, disabled trying to get across that bridge. Safety is a huge concern of mine. I was, you know, yeah. I was running for council when oh, this right, went down. Oh, right, right. But I was so disappointed to see that pedestrian bridge taken out because I was in on those planning meetings, those community meetings, and uh, we saw the drawings in the paper, and, and then it got suddenly pulled out. Yeah, I was very disappointed, mm -hmm. too. You know, and it doesn't mean it's, you know, it, it could come back. It could come right, back. Right, right. That would back, be great. But, but I know it was one of the concerns I remember reading mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, so I think uh, you had talked about concerns or um, right, from people, residents. That people have mentioned to you about Yeah, residents, to me, their biggest concern is safety. Uh -huh. You know, and we heard it at those community meetings with the LRT uh -huh. planning groups. Uh, a lot of parents are saying, I won't let my child cross that road right oh, now right. because it's just too unsafe. They try to do alternate ways to get across. Mm. So when you in factor in a train uh, with people trying to cross right. and traffic, mm -hmm. I, you know, that is a huge concern to right. residents. And I'm sure is being addressed at these meetings. Yeah, weird. We hope. Yeah, in, my, in Ward 4 particularly, those of us that live east of... Uh, 81 that's mm -hmm. a huge concern because first of all you know we're worried a bit, little bit about the added congestion just trying to get across right <laughs> to go west on Bass Lake Road um, the north and south traffic won't be affected too much because mm -hmm. the train is going to be sure. going that same direction mm -hmm. but then to get to the the station platform uh, you know I'd have to cross myself because getting older you know oh, I right, don't walk as right. fast as I used to and then, of course, all the kids and their bikes and people going to the park. Um, yeah, it's, it's so really So it's an issue they're still working on, right? Right. Well, we're still rallying. Right. Yeah, and we have... Keep at it. Yeah, we will. I think we've contacted our, our U.S. Congressman, Keith Ellison, who yep. is going to ah. try to check in on that pedestrian bridge right. and advocate for us. So right. um, very looking forward. And my key thing is... Um, I want it to be successful. Right. I also want it to be safe. Yeah, both. <laughs> right. Both sides. Right. Yeah. So. Okay, well, I want to thank you so much yeah, for sharing you. your time and your Appreciate experience it. and ideas. We'll encourage you out there to tune in next week for part two on Crystal's Issues. We're glad that you've been with us, and we'll look for you next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.